Hi, I'm Rob Cos, and welcome to my shop. I am frequently asked the question, what hand planes do I need? If you plan to build furniture, I'm going to give you my opinion on what I would consider the top three. The first is my jack plane. This I use probably 85% of the time I'm using a hand plane. What do I like about it? Well, it's long enough to be effective in the shooting board and short enough to be fairly good general purpose. I chose the five and a half because it's a little larger, or at least it had the rear tote is a little larger, so if you have an adult male hand, this is gonna be a little more comfortable. And it's designed to be a three finger grip. Your index finger sits right here underneath the frog. The blade is two and three eighths of an inch wide, so with that wide of a sole, it's very stable in use. Now I mentioned shooting board. In case you don't know, shooting board is nothing more than an apparatus designed to hold the workpiece and the tool at right angles. Right angles this way, and also right angles this way. So instead of trying to balance this in your vise and plane it, you could simply come in here. First thing I would do would be to pull it away from the fence right here and cut a little chamfer on the back side, then flip it around and continue planing until that little chamfer disappears. But because of the square soles and square sides of the plane, it's gonna come out square this direction and because of the setup of the shooting board, it's going to become square in this direction. Very effective. I consider this to be critical. So that's my first plane and my most used. Second would be a low angle block plane. And why? Well, you need a one handed plane. If you're coming in to cut a chamfer around something, it's kind of awkward to do it with a big uh, a j uh, jack plane. Whereas this nestles in your palm nicely, very easy to control. Why the low angle? Well, here's a standard angle to put do it side by side for comparison's sake. You see how much higher the lever cap is on the standard angle? So when you're holding it in your hand, this is far more comfortable than this one. At least that's how I feel. If you want to change the angle of attack, meaning the angle that you're meeting the wood, which is the, design, the uh, intention here with the standard angle, you're meeting the wood at 20 degrees, which is what the bedding angle is of the blade. Factor in the angles that you have on your blade because the bevel is in the up position, so you've got an additional 25 degrees added to the 20, that has you at 45, and whatever micro bevels you have will put you even higher. Low angle starts at 12 degrees for a bedding angle, plus 25, plus whatever micro bevels, you're planing somewhere around 45 degrees. If you want to increase it, you can simply buy another blade and put a steeper bevel on there, and that changes the dynamics of the cut. But for pur general purpose and for comfort, I find this one far better. So that would be my choice for the block plane. Now, shoulder plane. Well, this is a completely different animal in that the blade runs the entire width of the sole from side to side. That allows you to get right into a vertical surface. You cannot do that with the block plane because the blade does not go all the way, nor does it go all the way on a, on a, on a uh, bench plane. Why a three quarter? Well, typically you can get them smaller down to a half inch and you can get them larger up to an inch or even bigger. But since you're typically using this on a mortise and tendon joint, and you're trimming the end grain shoulder around the tenon, which is usually going to be a third of the width of the stock, most people are working with either three quarter inch material or inch and a half. That means you're either going to be cutting a quarter inch wide shoulder or a half inch. This would cover both and even bigger. And it has just the right amount of heft. Really like that size. So those are what I would consider to be your three critical planes. You're going to cover most of your bases with this. If you want to go even further, there's some others in here I'd point out. This is a um, skew block plane, which I find to be in a very effective joinery plane. It has a lot of characteristics I enjoy. At some point, you may want to have a jointer. A jointer is 22 inches long. It's very effective in doing a large surface, whether you're straightening an edge or flattening a surface. A smaller plane will ride the hills and valleys, leaving them smooth, but not necessarily flat. The long sole of a jointer will reference off of these high points and help you bring them down to one level. It does require skill, but not as much as it would with a smaller plane. And at some point, you may want to consider adding in a smoother, a dedicated smoother, which will ignore those hills and valleys, but it'll make the surface nice and smooth. This is critical. This is a nice to have. Hope that helps.